proud and confident Oregon football team returned for the 1989 season with a burning desire to atone for the misfortune of 1988. This was a team that had seen its bowl dream shattered a year ago with a season-ending five-game losing streak. But preseason optimism ran high. Ten starters returned on offense, including quarterback Bill Musgrave. The junior signal caller would go on to set single-season and individual game records formerly held by Chris Miller and Dan Fouts. Musgrave would have plenty of weapons at his disposal. Senior tailback Derek Lavelle would begin the year as the most prolific rusher in school history and would add the scoring mark to his long list of accomplishments. Wide receiver Terry Obey would finish among the all-time leaders in career receptions and become the number one punt returner for attempts and total yards in Pac-10 history. Coupled with a veteran offensive line, this unit would lead the conference in scoring and set a school record in the process with an average of 32 points a game. Defensively, preseason All-American cornerback Chris Oldham would live up to those expectations. He would be among the conference leaders in interceptions and lead the Pac-10 for the second year in a row in kickoff returns. Oregon would finish second to conference champion USC in total defense. Kicker Greg McCallum would surpass all school records. The sophomore from Seattle tallied 100 points, connecting on 22 of 29 three-pointers and 34 extra points. A record number of fans would pack Autzen Stadium. It would become one of the toughest venues in the Pac-10 for visiting teams. These fans had waited 26 years for a postseason invitation, and they would thrill in the excitement and success of the 1989 Oregon Ducks, a team that was bowl bound. September 9th, the Ducks and Cal Bears at Autzen Stadium. Over 35,000 fans on a 90-degree day at a regional television audience. The season could not have started any better. As the Ducks took the opening kickoff, marched 75 yards in 15 plays. Bill Musgrave to Tony Hargain for the first score of the year. One of three scoring passes on the day for the junior quarterback. The Ducks would rack up 459 yards of total offense. Senior fullback Latin Berry accounting for a career-high 151 on the ground. He would later be honored as Pac-10 Offensive Player of the Week. But the play of the day, courtesy wide receiver Joe Reitzig. He goes high into the air, keeps one foot in bounds for what proved to be the winning points in a 35-19 triumph. What happened the next week in Iowa City, Iowa, sent shockwaves throughout the nation. A dominating performance against a perennial Big Ten power. Musgrave was brilliant again. Three touchdown passes, two of them to tight end Colia Teft. Derek Horton, two of three Oregon interceptions as the Ducks waltzed to a convincing 44-6 win. The victory was marred by knee injuries to center Scott Boatwright and Latin Berry. They would miss the next week at Stanford. The Ducks were well on their way to a third straight victory. Musgrave with two more scoring passes to Hargain and Terry Obey. The Ducks led it 17-0 with under eight minutes to play. But the Cardinal refused to die and on the final play of the game, John Hopkins kicked a 37-yard field goal and for the second time in three years, the Cardinal had shocked the Ducks down on the farm. The emotional defeat set up a key game at Autzen Stadium the following week. The defense responded with one of the best efforts of the year. Nose guard David Kusana with a first quarter interception to set up the only Oregon touchdown of the afternoon. Late in the game, the Ducks clinging to a 16-10 lead. The defense held again. The Ducks improved to 3-1, and 2-1 and one in Pac-10 play. Washington State up next, and in a game with over 900 yards of total offense, it was defense and special teams that helped the Cougars win. A blocked punt in the first quarter gave Washington State the early advantage, and the Ducks had to climb uphill the rest of the way. Fourth quarter, the Ducks down by three with the ball, but Musgrave's long pass is intercepted by Ron Ricard. He took it the distance, and the Cougars prevailed 51-38. Week six and the fifth conference game of the season, this time in Seattle. The Washington defense stymied the Ducks all day, forcing a season-high seven turnovers. The final one by tight end Joe Merton sealed Oregon's fate. A once promising season seemed to be slipping away. The Ducks were three and three with five to play. The stretch drive began on a wet night in Tempe, Arizona. It was a night to remember for senior tailback Derek Lavelle. A season-high 203 yards on the ground, three touchdowns, as the Ducks dominated the Sun Devils 27-7 in a game not nearly as close as the final score. The next two weeks provided non-conference tests, although Long Beach State was not much of a challenge. Six different Ducks found the end zone, and the defense held the 49ers to 230 yards, 52-10 the final score. 
another must win the next week in Provo, Utah. One of the wildest games in recent years. The Ducks built up an 18 point third quarter lead. But the nation's leading passer, Ty Detmer, rallied his team to take the lead 38-33 with six minutes to play. Oregon actually had to score three times to regain the lead. Musgrave to Terry Obie for the go-ahead touchdown with three minutes to play. But Detmer again rallied his team, getting into the end zone with one minute to play. And at that point, the Ducks' bowl chances seemed to be fading. A struggling UCLA was up next. The Bruins on their way to their only losing season of the decade. A strong second-half performance by the Ducks was the difference. Lattenberry's 29-yard scamper late in the ballgame capped a 38-20 victory and set up the season-ending showdown with Oregon State. Seeking revenge for a loss in Corvallis a year ago, the Ducks raced out to a 16-0 halftime lead and were in control. Greg McCadam with three of his school record 22 field goals. But the Oregon State Beavers caught fire in the third quarter. They closed the deficit to 23-21 with over seven minutes to play. The offense then responded with a 57-yard drive in seven plays for the insurance touchdown. 30-21 the final score. The seven victories, the most for the Ducks in 25 years. And two days later, the Ducks received an invitation to the Independence Bowl, the first postseason appearance by the Ducks in 26 years. After three weeks of practice, the Ducks headed south for the 14th annual Independence Bowl. A chilly Shreveport, Louisiana greeted Coach Brooks and his team, but a small group of boosters gave the Ducks a warm and enthusiastic welcome. I think everyone was a little tired, but no one was sleeping really. It was always buzzing. I think uh, everyone was looking out the windows to see uh, the kind of lights they could see. You know, this is a big thing for us. It's something that's never happened in, you know, in a long, it hasn't happened in a long time. So we are very, very excited about this entire situation. And the guys are just fired up all playing right down here. So it should be a fun week and uh, hopefully we can win Saturday. The next three days would be busy for the Ducks. The Shreveport hospitality was overwhelming. Pre-game festivities were capped by an inspiring pep rally Friday night. Saturday, December 16th, game day. Oregon fans over 4,000 strong were ready for the occasion. The quack attack was poised for national television. As the Ducks took the field at Independence Stadium, 26 years of frustration had ended. The dream had become a reality. But that dream dissolved into a first half nightmare. The Oregon offense stumbled in the sub-freezing temperatures. The Tulsa Golden Hurricane played an inspired 30 minutes of football. And at halftime, the Ducks trailed 17-10. In the third quarter, the Golden Hurricane blew out to a 14-point lead. And even the most loyal Duck fan had to wonder what was going wrong. But this was a team that would not quit. Bill Musgrave found Joe Reitzik in the corner of the end zone, and the Ducks trailed by only seven. The defense took cue and smothered Tulsa's offense over the final 20 minutes. The green and yellow was beginning to dominate the game. In the fourth quarter, Musgrave rolled out, found a crease, and danced into the end zone, his first career touchdown, and the game was tied. Musgrave was honored as the game's most valuable player. With 3.07 to play, Greg McCallum booted a 20-yard field goal, and the Ducks had the lead 27-24. Tulsa had one final possession. Quarterback T.J. Rubley scrambled back and forth across the field, but in the end, he could not elude Matt Labonte, and Oregon's third bowl victory in history was secure. It was time for the Ducks to celebrate and thank their loyal followers. Well, you know, it was a great group of people that came here today. We wanted to go home with a victory. And uh, I just, I just, I can't believe it happened. We were down and we came back like we've done earlier this season and it feels great. You know, we thought it was going out in style to uh, be, you know, 74 to, and, uh, to uh, beat Oregon State and finish up at home. Well, this is going out in style. They now can claim to be the only, only the third team in Oregon history to win a bowl game and to be one of the top six teams with eight or nine wins in school history is, is something they can remember the rest of their lives, and I'm very, very proud of them. An entire state rejoiced in the accomplishments of one of the great teams in Oregon history. 
an 8-4 record, a slew of individual and team records, plus the championship of the Independence Bowl. The decade of the 80s had come to an end in championship fashion far from home. The future of the 90s is bright. Indeed, the Ducks are building something big. For the players, the coaches, and the fans, 1989 was truly a year to remember.